guys, welcome back to this place. If you are new, welcome here for the very first time. I'm Carmen, and today we are watching the plan film in the Battlestar Galactica universe, which I was told to watch between episode 15 and episode 16 of season four. So that's when I'm watching it. So if you guys are like, no, why are you watching it now? You should have watched it XYZ time. I'm sorry, this is this is when I'm supposed to watch it, from what I know. So the last episode we had the, oh gosh, we had Ellen officially back as one of the final five. We saw her perspective after New Caprica in bits and pieces. Her sort of battle with Cavill and, well, debate, I guess, is more an appropriate term. We had Anders tell the remainder of the final five what he remembered after getting shot in the head, and I do believe we have lost him as a character now. We also had Rosalind and Lee talking about Lee going to be president, and the ship, the Galactica, is going to get a very interesting, very Cylon renovation. So lots of stuff going on. I have no idea when this movie takes place, if we're if it takes place between episode 15 and episode 16, or what it's about. I, I can't really preface it except for that's where we were, and let's see if that's where we're taking off from. Like I said on the previous episode, just in case this is your first time watching, I'm only gonna have this in one ear. I do usually have it in two ears now, but I have an ear infection in this ear, so I don't wanna put anything in it right now, so. There are many copies. And they have a plan. Mm. So do we find out like the Cylons end goal in this one? Oh, there's Ty, Adama. I have no idea when this is. I figured out what went wrong. Well, that's a very useful revelation to have when you're standing in front of an airlock. Yeah, but they'll be reborn, right? They haven't got... Nonetheless, our failure is us. This... We had our foot on the throat of humanity and we failed to step down hard. This looks like that was season... Have you learned nothing in all this time in this fleet? One or two? Two weeks before the attack on the colonies. Ooh. Perhaps with our dear mother here, I'll slide in another tub and we can download side by side after the bombs hit on Pika. Well, indulge yourself if you want. Pretty fucked up. But I'll be on Caprica making final arrangements with our contact. So if you're going to go, go soon. Their contact, so he's talking about uh, six with Gaius, right? We only saw this very briefly. 14 hours before. Are you clear on the timing? 0700 tomorrow, Caprica City time. Oh, this green screen is a bit rough. I recommend you leave this body behind. The alternative won't make for a very pleasant memory. Oh, and I hear that poison is really not that bad. Okay, so he met with Oh, we've never seen PyCon before. That I remember, at least. Club Pink Moon. There's lots of nudity in this movie, huh? Oh, of course. You really like those olives, don't Ellen. you? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I just like how I look reaching for them. So is Cavill the only one who knew who the final five were the whole time? in the training camp. You're up. So, it was Cavill who wanted to do this. If no one is corrected, then no one learns their lessons. Well, I've lived in this world a long time. And I'm proud to say that I haven't learned any God's damn lessons. <laughs> That's kind of funny. If we find a project whose 
cost is cities and they were outside of the city, right? That's how they survived. The plains of Leonis are burning. It's pretty fucked up that they were all like so happy about it. You know? You're trained for this. You're ready for this. Stand to your I don't duty. Think anybody could be ready for the that. Your fellowship mates. We'll all get through this. All right, people. This is what we do. We're the best. So let's get the old girl ready to roll and kick some silence. They all look like such babies. Let's go. Move. It's better be for real. I just know it's old footage. Some of that I recognize. What do you think? I don't know. They're just a team of, like, we can't stay here. works people. We gotta go. You know? Everybody stay low, stay fast. Let's go. They only left because of Sam, honestly. Probably. fail to observe the moral failures of humanity against whom you find me lack. Open your eyes and take a gander at what you think you love. I wonder if she actually remembered before she woke up and she was just playing the role of Ellen Ty still. I mean, I'm assuming we'll find out, but... What the hell is that? That's a thigh. This turns it around, right there. Simon doesn't know that Sam is one of the final five, right? Now we're eight days. We've lost everything and now we're putting him through the ringer just trying to get away. This, I think, is a new scene because they look different. Excuse me. Oh, pardon me, brother. Thank you for your help. Take one, my child. Thank you, brother. Interesting. Does it say, do you know about the plan? The gods can help. Private counseling group prayer. Brother Cavill. So that's how he wanted them to all meet. I remember the brunette, uh, six. Now I have assignments I'm gonna to give to each of you along with our sleeper agent. Is a sleeper agent? Yes, an eight. I'll talk to her. A two. Okay. You come with me. Let's get this genocide started. So what were these sixes assignments? Well, if he sees one of us, he'll know what we are. I mean, he can't say. But he can't say anything without saying how he knows. I remember her from season Very one smart. as well. Or maybe it's the glasses. Anyway, carry on. Does that make me smart? According to Cavill, I don't really know if I want to be. in general haven't been that impressive thus far. One of your counterparts managed to get himself out at back on Ragnar Station. I, I can't understand how he was discovered. I'm talking about the fact that you're walking around this fleet wearing that jacket. Well, his, his jacket was burgundy. This is teal. <laughs> well, I have... It's the same fucking jacket. 
Hmm. If I found cylinders in that condition, you'd be looking at a shutdown. All right, well, grab the spares. There are no spares. Exactly. Welcome to the Galactica. <laughs> Our romance had different obstacles. There's always something. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> they put it on her bunk to try to like start triggering her, right? Trying to wake her up from being a sleeper cell. Chief Tyrrell loves me. Chief Tyrrell? <laughs> That's an interesting human to choose among all humans. Because he knows it's not a human. I don't think I've ever met anyone from Simon's childhood. Please sit down. It doesn't make sense. Well, I'm sure we'd have loads to talk about, but I'm so busy right now you can't imagine. Stop by sometime. And remember, I know where you live. Oh, he's threatening him. He recognizes him, of course. Because the cavil was with uh, Anderson, though. Do you, uh, you know, your confessions? I can, of course, yes, I can. Good. We'll talk about it. All right. I'm intrigued. I am intrigued. And don't you think for a moment that I'm going to be moved by the sweet, adorable fact that you married one of them? Why does Cavill hate humans so much? You come back tomorrow. And we'll talk about you blowing up that ship you live on. Like, in particular. Because he kind of, like, cloaks himself in the... He's doing it for the Centurions, but... You're gonna be okay, I promise you. That's one of us Interesting. So just listening to her voice, he draws the same thing that she's drawn before? Coincidence. Struck a nerve, have I? Which I find rather impossible to believe. You think this is over? This is not over. You are not on the nerve. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I forgot about no more Mr. Nice Guy. <laughs> it's so stupid. I could blend into life on another ship with another disguise. Go. And don't forget to give them our coordinates. I want this finished. So that's where she went, which we did not know before. I want my family kept safe. No, mm -hmm. you don't want that. Yes, he does. You see, if they die now, they'll die without ever knowing what you are. I mean, I never liked, well, I don't know. He was the creepy doctor on Caprica that was doing experiments on women, so. Obviously there's more than one of him. I love you. Not enough. If you're gonna kill her. Oh, did he kill himself instead of blowing the ship up? Or did he blow it up? You want a progress report? Uh, I'll give you a fracking progress report. If he did that, then I like that iteration of him. Really killed himself out of resurrection range without blowing up the ship that he lived on because he couldn't imagine life without his little human wife. That's good. And his little human uh, daughter because he stop, loves them. Stop, stop, That's stop. good. I'm proud of him. Don't you fours have a, a little place? What do you call it? Uh, ranch? No. A farm? Creepy as fuck. Creepy as fuck. 
Why do they have a farm? Mm, I don't want it. Mm, I don't even want to know. That was one of the more disturbing episodes of... Um... I'm Brother Cavill. I understand you've asked for religious counseling. Mm -hmm. I never really believed in psychotherapy. We shot forward to 280 days now. I thought he loved me. He did. Gods. Maybe he did. I don't know. He did. I think Simon was told to do something and instead he killed himself. That is correct. She was a better shot than that. It's like she... fracked it up on purpose, knowing that the Marines would take her head off right then and there, knowing that it was the only way out she could see. Y'all are both right. What's your name? Daniel. John. John. I thought it would be like a name he recognized. Interestingly, it's his own name. I wonder if that kid even actually exists or if it's just him. We become friends, huh? You know, if it's just the memory of himself when he was a kid. Friends are dangerous things. Was he gonna kill him? <laughs> what the fuck, Cavill? The way that he just discarded of him. Do you really believe it was a mistake to attack the humans? Rather intensely, yes. I'm going to see to it that you get boxed. And then I'm going to prepare to wipe out humanity once and for all. The anticipation is really unpleasant. It does seem like the one cowboy actually learned something. I don't want to be human. I'm a machine, and I could know much more. Mm. Okay, so that was a lot. I took a lot of notes. I think overall I enjoy the, like what it is doing, how it's showing us from the perspective of the Cylons. I like that we kind of understand now Cavill's motivation for what he was doing. And even though I think maybe the wrong Cavill is in charge now, you can understand that it's all coming from a place of wanting to be loved by the parents. In a really interesting way, it's kind of paralleling the story of like i'm trying to remember in the bible right god made the angels first and then he made humans and the idea is that he loved the humans more and the angels or at least some of the angels like were jealous of that right is that i'm gonna look it up hold on you guys i want to i don't want to spout incorrect facts Okay, you know, I might just be making stuff up or remembering stuff wrong from Supernatural, but I feel like there was this idea that Lucifer, who was a fallen angel, at least, and I don't know, I don't, I honestly, you guys, I cannot tell you if I learned it on Supernatural or like in actual life, so I could just be spouting utter nonsense. But I feel like I remember there was this idea that he was jealous of the way that God loved humans because we were sinful and Im imperfect, whereas angels were perfect. And in that in that way, Cavill's story sort of is is paralleling that because Cavill saying, you know, our parents, the five, created us. And then, but they don't love us as much or God doesn't love us as much as he loves the humans, right? <sighs> yeah, 
I don't know if that made any sense. But in that way, I think that this is a really interesting story. It's good to get a peek into Cavill and to see that he's kind of just as horrible as I thought, you know? The one Cavill had some redeeming qualities, but this Cavill, the main Cavill, most of the Cavils don't, you know? <laughs> and I guess it's it's good to see from that perspective and to sort of fill in a few of the blanks and to understand that he made this plan with these Cylons and then all of the Cylons one by one started to sort of get swept away with humanity and with disobeying his plan, right? Leah Ben with Kara, Simon with his family, Doral is just, you know, failing, I guess. And then we also have like Deanna, but she had like a specific purpose that she wanted. Um, the sixes kind of failed him with their infatuation with Gaius and just failing him in general. And then they voted, they were obviously part of the vote that voted that they were wrong with what they did to humanity. So I think that that's interesting to see that he's sort of, or was in this instance, the lone uh, person who was like wanting to just completely wipe out humanity. Like he was like, I don't want a single human. We saw like Boomer question. We saw like every other Cylon that we've seen sort of like faltered or loved a human or saw things a different way. And he's kind of the only one that was like, it's humanity that's the issue. We need to kill every last one of them. And only when we are alone in the universe, alone, because, you know, there's probably other life out there, uh, will we be our parents' favorite, right? So I think that was a really interesting sort of... Uh, thing to show us and for us to see and it probably has relevance going forward I'm assuming with like how Cavill is going to act in the last five episodes of the show and where it's gonna take us with uh Ellen and Sharon and where they went at the end of episode 15. So I really enjoyed it in that way. Now this movie was almost two hours long and I felt kind of all two hours of it and I think that it's because of the fact that they lingered so long on the scenes that we had already seen and I do understand why they included them to add context they really just wanted to show you kind of the behind the, like what's happening from Cavill's perspective during all of these moments, right? To show us the Cylon perspective during certain big events that were happening. Cause we don't see that very often in the show. Um, I mean, kind of, but not exactly from Cavill's perspective to understand because he's kind of our main antagonist going forward right into the very end of the show I think um I mean I would assume so I understand why they set it up the way they set it up but I have to say that like I it made it less enjoyable for me because it's it was rehashing things we had already seen one and the way, like, it just lingered on the things that we had already seen way too long, in my opinion. Like, I think if they wanted to give us the context of the moment, they could have done so in a much shorter amount of time. It felt very much like, to me, again, just, just me personally, all I can speak for is my own experience watching this, but it felt to me like they're not trusting that I remember the moment based off of like a clip this big. So they have to show me a clip this big so that I fully remember, you know, 
But honestly, like right when they start showing you, you kind of remember, you know, like what happens and the context of it. So I don't know. I think that in general, I don't love it when things are a little too handholdy and a little bit too like seemingly distrustful of the audience to be able to fill in the blanks and the context clues. So I, I don't know. I don't, I didn't love those aspects of it, right? Like all of the new scenes I thought were interesting to see these perspectives or these things from another perspective. But all of the scenes that I had already seen, I had already seen, you know? So, I don't know. I didn't love it. Like, I definitely think that out of, like, the films that I've seen and the webisodes, that it, it added the context that was necessary, I think, going forward, or I'm going to assume is necessary going forward. But I just... I think the execution of it is the weakest, in my opinion. I just, I, I always get, sorry, I was just checking my phone. <laughs> I always just get a bit nervous when I criticize something in any way because I am hyper aware that people love this show. And I, I love Battlestar too, you guys, don't get me wrong. But I also think that loving a show means that you have to be, uh, or a thing in general, is that you have to be critical when you think that it's it could have done something better. And I definitely think that this movie could have done what it was trying to do better. Now, I don't exactly know off the top of my head how, except for by like shortening the contextual things that they gave us because I feel like it's like obviously they couldn't have included certain moments because before because then it would have spoiled like who the final five are and all of that stuff but yeah I'm not sure I would have to to brainstorm to think of like what I would do um it's just, like I said, this is just isn't my favorite sort of execution of an idea. Yeah. But, like I said, that being said, it was nice to sort of see Cavill and to see, like, his hatred for humanity, I guess. Um, because... It was interesting to see different moments and kind of realize how they came together, like Leah Ben and Starbuck, to see like him sort of weirdly connecting to her through listening to her and then drawing the symbol and then he touched her and then he had all of the like flashes and stuff. Like that was really interesting. Like I think that was well done. I think certain moments were well done. Like we see Cavill having chances to lean into his humanity with the little boy John and then ultimately we see him like be super fucked up and decide that friends friendship is weakness and so he just eliminates the potential threat to him right so that was interesting it was interesting to see Tyrrell and his connection with the one the one woman whose name I forget who sort of had a almost parallel path to as him except for she wasn't one of the final five Cylons in that they both at least up to a point because they both like fell for Cylons and then realized that the Cylons were more than what they were maybe being portrayed to be and they had this sort of connection through that so that was interesting to see that I still don't fully understand all of Cavill's motivations like he's kind of contradicted himself a bit like so humanity's sin was he was doing this for the justice for the centurions but then he also kind of treats the centurions like shit so make that make sense and then he also talks about it's because of 
their parents, you know, like they just, they, or the ones Cavill realizes that, you know, it was because they wanted to be loved. And then they also says that humans deserve to be, um, killed because of the sin of creating them. So they deserve to die because of that. And then he, you know, says humans are cockroaches and he just wants to kill them all. And it's just like, I mean, I don't understand fully his, his motivation. Uh, I think I understand as well as I'm supposed to at this moment. Like I understand what he's saying his motivation is. Um, and I understand the, that I think that it is like the one Cavill said, because he, he's lashing out because he wants to be loved and he doesn't want to admit that. And he was jealous and all that stuff like Ellen said in the previous episode. Um, but I'm curious if we'll get like maybe further context or further nuance to his, his full motivations in the last five episodes of the series. I also thought something that I thought was really interesting in this was Boomer talking about how the way that she was able to shoot Adama was by turning herself into a centurion basically um which I think is really interesting because she's saying like she shut the human part or she killed I think she said the human part of her which she didn't fully because at the end when she dies she tells Tyrrell that she loves him but I just thought that was a really interesting thing that she's saying you know in order to act like a machine I had to turn off the human aspects that were created within me um because I couldn't do it as the current version of myself which kind of almost makes it seem like if they want the the Cylons want to be fully machines then they're actually they've evolved too far right because they they aren't the perfect machine like Cavill said in the last episode like we see throughout this entire movie examples of how human they are right like we see examples of just them just being like so human and even Cavill like you know we see love we see jealousy we see rage we see hatred we see sadness we see fear we see all of these things that are tying them to humanity that they don't want to admit but if they devolved into the centurions again centurions again then they would lose the traits that make them more human which would be a de-evolution but would interestingly kind of make it easier for them to continue right because the centurions as far as we know don't have as advanced a level of like understanding or sentience that the Cylons that are that appear to like look more human do skin jobs as they call them right so that's really interesting it's also interesting that Cavill considers himself better than the Centurions which you clearly see in this in this movie and then also in the past I think but yet he also claims that he's doing this because the centurions deserve justice yet you're also being shitty to the centurions so like did i already say that i feel like i already said that maybe i'm just repeating myself now oh yeah we want i i need to talk about how cavill knew who the final five were the entire time so like we didn't think that he knew which we, we realized this in the last episode, I think, but we didn't think he knew when he was talking to three that time, the Deanna, because he like boxed her for wanting to know who the final five were, which is interesting because he knew all along. So like, what was his 
motivation behind not wanting the other Cylons to know who the final five were. You know, we don't really know. We don't really know what his motivation was. Also interesting, I don't really have a lot to say about this, but both Sam and Ellen said this has happened before when the bomb dropped, which it had because that's what happened um, on Earth, right? So just interesting. They both like had a moment of remembering, but not fully who they were. Oh, also, just looking at my notes, I just realized that Cavill being confused and talking to Sam and saying like, oh, you'll love them when they're dead. And he's like, well, of course, I still love someone just because they're dead. That was the moment for that iteration of Cavill because then later he tells the other Cavill, your plan was flawed all along, or our plan was flawed all along because I got like direct confirmation from one of our parents that killing the humans won't make them love them any less. They'll still love them just cause they're gone. Doesn't like negate or erase that. So that's interesting. It took me till reading that note to like put all of it together in context, but yeah. The other Cavill didn't have that experience though. So it makes sense that he, and he doesn't understand that emotion, I don't think. So it makes sense that he would be blind to that particular aspect of it. It's also interesting because Cavill also said, as long as the humans exist, there's no place for us. Which I wonder if he means like in the final five's eyes, we don't matter because as long as the humans are there, they're going to care about the humans more. I don't know I still like I, I wonder how this is all gonna wrap up obviously because we have five episodes left yeah five episodes left uh we still have to figure out like Gaius's significance we still have to figure out who the hell and what the hell Kara is we still have to figure out if humanity is going to survive the Cylons if Cavill's coming Ellen I assume is going to the fleet and how that's going to work out with her and the Sharon that she's with. So we just have a lot of questions and we don't have a lot of answers yet. But I am so excited to watch the last five episodes of this show and figure out where we're going from here. You know, I did not love this movie. It, it, it's not like a obsession you know like I wasn't I don't know I think it's important but I just wish that there was things that were different about it because I do think that what it shows us about Cavill and some of and like Leoben and the cars like it gives us important insights I just maybe don't love the way that it did that you know Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling because I've kept you here far, far too long. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you want, you can watch the next episode right now over on Patreon if you're watching this on YouTube, as well as my entire full-length reaction to this movie and everything that's come before it on Battlestar Galactica, including the miniseries, the Resistance webisodes, the Face of the Enemy webisodes, the Razor film, just all of the things. You can watch all of the things. I'm gonna go and maybe find some more goldfish snacks. I don't know. I'm a little hungry. I hope to see you guys next time for the final five episodes of Battlestar Galactica, which is kind of crazy. Until then. Bye, guys.